Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the living God who loves us with a true agape love. He wants to put that love on our mind, write it on our heart, and keep our heart and minds in perfect peace. He's the God who loves us and will never stop loving us. And all we have to do is keep on coming, keep on getting up, keep on coming, keep on laying it all down before him and living in his sight. God has made us holy and righteous through Jesus Christ. He's brought us into his house and now we are his children, his blessed children, his blessed children. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessing. He has blessed us with life everlasting in his presence. We belong to God. We are have inherited. We have an, we, we have an, an inheritance. <laughs> an inheritance of right righteousness. Of right living. It, it's all everything that is good of God has been poured out into our hearts. We get to live in the very nature of who he is because he's shining into our hearts. He's his love, the way that God, he, God is love, right? And the love that he is, is radiating in you right now. It's radiating in me. He loves us so much. And this love is greater than any love that anyone has ever known. Yet we have come to him and laid out our hearts before him. And we're learning how to walk righteously in his sight. We're learning how to do, we're learning how to lay down all our cares, all of the thoughts that enter our mind, of these strong desires we have, whether they're good or bad. God sees them and he wants to give us an understanding. He wants to give us the right motive for we, while we want something good and for us to cast away all that is bad. He knows exactly how to do it. That's why he sent his spirit into our hearts so that we could learn how to walk righteously in his sight. We can do it if we submit our heart to God. We, we can do all things through Christ who is the strength of our lives. Because of Christ, we have strength spiritual wisdom and knowledge is ours it's ours right away but all we have to do is trust god with our mind will and emotions with the situation that seems so scary i'm telling you greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world the one who created the world and all that there is in it has sent his spirit into your heart to give you wisdom and knowledge and understanding his hand is on your life to prepare you for everything that we're, that you might have to walk through. He knows it. Before it ever came into before it ever came into your life, the situation God saw that situation. And he wants to bring you the knowledge and the wisdom to bring you through it. He wants to give you the comfort you need. He's right there to help us to live right. And all we have to do is breathe. <laughs> See, we're in his presence day and night. Day and night in this world. Because in heaven there is no day and night, right? There's light forever. God is light. There's no darkness in him. The darkness is outside of him. And we live in a planet where there is gross darkness and that darkness enters our mind and we can't see which way to go in, in this life. We don't know what to do. Situations come and they hurt. We don't, we're trying to fight with our strength and our wisdom and, and it just gets worse. We get angry and we find no self-control. When all of this, all these things that are going on in our thought life are to be laid down before the Lord. See, if we, I'll say this again. If we are getting 
the word in our face. If we're sitting down and taking notes and looking and searching diligently for the, for the Lord, we are being rewarded with the knowledge of his will. He is pouring into us wisdom and spiritual understanding so that we can overcome everything that's coming against the knowledge of God in our lives. See, I'm, I'm speaking to us personally because each and every person who's been born on this planet has the chance to come to God. It's their choice. It's their choice. See, and once we choose Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives, that he's the Son of God who died and rose again, and we desire him to be master, ruler, and Lord over our lives, we come into a place of complete surrender where we understand that we don't know how to live righteously. And we're not talking about being religious, right living, knowing how to live this life in the true love, the nature of love that God is and, and we have become. It means taking all that I am and saying, Lord, I don't, I don't, I don't know about this thought right here. I, can you show me what to do? Show me your ways. When people hurt you, I know I talk about this a lot. Sorry, until he gets me off the subject, <laughs> we're going to be talking about this. It's going to keep coming up. We keep taking that person and we lay them out before the Lord. Instead of taking the injury that the person's causing us and complaining about our great suffering, we're learning how to live through, live in patience, while we suffer without you know dashing that person to pieces or going in on ourselves and saying oh what a dirty wretch i am oh poor me why me we're, we're letting go of all these cares for what god said because what god said shows us how to live right it shows us how to speak what the Lord is speaking so that we're speaking life to that individual who hurt us. We're going, in other words, whatever is evil, we're overcoming it with good. Because we've taken the care, the matter, we're not taking it on ourselves like this was meant to demolish me, hurt me. This is not all about me. I put my, my life in the hand of the Lord. And he cares about me. He's going to lead me in a plain path. He knows the works of the enemy. They're meant to kill, steal, and destroy. But not everything's the enemy. So, you know, the temptations that we have, we should turn it around and say, I'm tempted to be good. I'm not tempted by evil. We're tempted to do good. God... I know the Bible says he, he tempts no man. He doesn't tempt us to do evil. He tempts us to do good. That still small voice that tells you, hey, wait a minute. Be still and know that I am God. In a horrendous situation, I don't mean stuck on a train track and the train is barreling at you. <laughs> get out of the car, okay? Get, get off the train tracks. You know, just get out of the car. I, I'm talking about these mental and emotional things, these physical things like, like illness and the threat of death and th that boyfriend and th that girlfriend, that, that job. This mental stronghold, I, I fear. and you know, There's such a great amount of things that come into the, come against the knowledge of God for you, for us, that we want to take all of this mental garbage and throw it to the ground to take hold of what God said to us so that we can become what we truly are. When we understand the real love of God, we can live in this love, breathe in this love, walk in this love, and not be offended by this world. Even when fellow Christians 
messed up or they're in such a rut that is unbelievable. The rut that they're in is like, wait, aren't they saved? Don't they believe God? But you're so tangled up in the fact that they said they believe God, but they're not walking in that love life of God. They're not walking in, in the humility of Jesus. They're, they're not surrendered. And that stuff will blow your mind if you try to wrap your head around it. But instead of being so flummoxed, <laughs> so jacked up in your mind over what somebody else said, that, who, who, who said they love God, you come over here and you sit down like the like Ezekiel before the valley of dry bones and God says shall this these bones live I know I'm, I bring it up again shall these bones live and Ezekiel tells the truth I don't know you know and he waited for the word he didn't wait for the word but God gave him the word of prophecy because he didn't put it on himself to conjure up something he looked to the Lord, the Father of heaven and earth, the one who can do all things, and said, Lord, you know. All power is in, in God. And he sent that very power into our hearts. He's given us his spirit. And his spirit truly helps us to live right, to live in patience, to bless and not curse to wait patiently on the Lord. The Lord gave Ezekiel. <laughs> he gave him the words to prophesy to the bones. You want to, I'll make it simple. The words to speak to the situation. There was a great need. We have great needs in our life today. We have great needs all around the world in the neighbor's house, across the street, down the street, and around the corner. And the greatest need for the whole world is salvation. Yet we're so caught up in ourselves and in our personal lives, not casting, not knowing how to just take all that we're caring about and putting it before the one who has the answer, who will give us the words to speak the blessing. Hmm? He'll give us his will in this earth the lord desires to give us wisdom and spiritual understanding so that we're walking in the sight of the lord the right way not after our human reasoning not after our feelings not to ourselves and what we desire because see what what we desire isn't necessarily right for the situation but god does know what's right for the situation he knows how to make my motives right for the situation so it's not just all about what I get out of it. But that other person who's involved. Because believe me, even if you should want something, there's somebody attached to the thing that you want. And their life is perfected, is made better because of you. Because of you and I. They might not get it right away, but there's something in what you need and what you desire that's going to change someone else's life. That's why we need to live righteously in the sight of God. We need to live for his glory so that whatever it is that this world needs, whatever we need, whatever we're going through, we can walk through it giving all glory and honor to God. It says... I want to read a couple of things. I, I really wanted to read a couple of, of things. I don't. I think I might have lost the one. Let's go back. Now I'll come back to this one. Genesis chapter seven, verse one. The Lord said to Noah, "Go into the ark, you and all your family, because I have found you righteous." in this generation and then there's this other scripture in, in luke chapter 1 verse 6 it says both of them were righteous in the sight of god walking blamelessly in all the commandments and decrees 
of the Lord. They were talking about Zechariah and Elizabeth. Here's the one I wanted. Noah, however, was found in favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. In his generation, Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. There's one more that I know of that walked with God and was taken. Noah walked with God, but Enoch walked with God. It says here in Hebrews 11 and verse 7, By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, he was warned about things not yet seen, in godly fear, built the ark to save his family. By faith, he, con he condemned the world and, because, and, and became heir of righteousness that comes by faith. Uh, I, I think that that's what Jesus gave us. We've been made heirs of God. Heirs of righteousness that comes by faith toward God. And we're supposed to be walking with the Lord, not outside of him. We are in him. And we're not moved by what we see around us. And, and the people who yell and scream and they just don't know what to do. The people uh, that say, I love God, but they still walk in filthiness. They're not giving in to all of this mess. I like what I read in Job. Job was, what does it say? Yeah, where are you? The, the first verse of Job, Job 1 and 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect. It means he was complete. It didn't mean he was absolutely sinless, but he, he feared God. And he hated evil, even if that was his sons and his daughters doing it, it living in sin. That Just because they, they might sin, he feared God enough to give an offering for his sons and daughters and pray for them. He interceded for them. He didn't curse his kids because they were venturing off into sin. He didn't know what they were doing in their parties. But he blessed his children. He repented for whatever they might do he gave glory to God he it's, this is what I'm talking about right now it's it's acknowledging God in all of our ways and having the true fear of the Lord in our hearts and then we're going to walk righteously we're going to walk in a plain path in a right way of living because we're walking in the knowledge of God it's not a knowledge that like the world has oh God he's there you know when it thunders it it means he's bowling and and if it's a big enough thunderclap it means he got a strike you know no this this God of our salvation the creator of all the ends of the earth wants us to walk in the knowledge in, in knowledge he is there he is with you and the wisdom that he's wants you to have is right there for you you can just all you do you do just ask trusting god is like the air that you like like breathing in and out it's like oxygen you you you, you were breathing and you don't worry about the next breath i know there are people who are on oxygen tanks and i pray your recovery right now in the name of jesus but breathing is not something that we worry about. It's just something we do. I, I, you know, first thought that comes to my mind is people on oxygen tanks who knows what it's like not to be able to catch your breath. But when there was that time that you breathed so easy, 
because just think about it. There was a time that you actually trusted God with all of your heart. I mean, you just, every situation, every circumstance, stance, every attitude of the heart was just falling back into the Lord's hands and trusting him, waiting for his word and speaking that. Hmm? Acknowledging him as I walk around the house or down the street, just God is, he's with me. I'm practicing his presence because one day we're going to be in his presence absolutely forever. And every part of you will be quickened. You will have a new, a new body. You'll have a new body. This earth suit, <laughs> it's going to be better than, better than this. But right now, while we're in this physical body, we have to understand how spiritual we really are. And we're going to grab a hold of the power. Hmm? We're going to possess the power not by greedy, selfish me. It's all about love. God is love and this love has entered our hearts. And we want this love residing deep in the depth of us and coming up out of us like that fountain that Jesus talked about. That, that living water spewing up out of you. Uh, man, I wish I could explain this all better. So that we cast every care we have before the Lord. You want to live right in God? Trust Him with all your heart. You're, not, you're trusting in who you know, just like Jesus says again. Know me. He knows that yoke. He knows you're burdened. He says, come give me the yoke. Come give me the burden. Huh? Come learn of me. Come get my heart. Come get my, my emotions. Come get me. <laughs> it was the strength of your life. Right there in, in Jesus. For whatever somebody else is doing and what, however you're thinking about it, we are to bless and not curse. We're to lift up and not tear down. If there's any tearing down to do, God knows how to dismantle. <laughs> He knows how to pull down and he'll give you the right strategy so that you can stand still while, while you, you can stand still and allow the Holy Spirit to do what he needs to do in you and say, be it at your will, Lord God, and have peace while you walk through any storm. God's not in the storm and he's not in the fire and he's not in the waves that try to overcome you. It's that still, small voice in your heart. He's speaking to us. and The more we, we, we say, no, I don't want that. I don't, I don't want these feelings right now. Though That's not mine. That's not mine. I don't, I don't, you know, I cast my care on the Lord. <laughs> Lord, here, take this. You get the power. You, you get to have take hold of the power of the highest that he planted in you for right living. And you can walk in the strength of the Almighty. The strength of Christ. Yeah, I hope I'm saying this right today. I'm sorry I keep on saying that. I don't doubt my word. I, I don't doubt the word that's coming out of me. I just have this great desire for us to be in Christ the right way. Not living to ourselves, but living on to God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. Everything, everything. No, everybody and all the hurt and all everything just thrown down before the Holy One, knowing that He will not fail you. He's going to work that situation out together for you. Good. Even if He has to shut a door and cut people off of your life. The Lord knows how to save them. And he knows who he will use to save them. But he's not going to lose you in the process of saving them. And if he's going to use you in the situation of someone else's life, 
that person that you so love, right? That person that you want to help make right. Listen, if he's going to use you, he's also going to keep you. He knows how to keep your heart and mind. And it's all because we keep coming to him. We're not complaining about the situation. We know that he is able and he's not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of who he is. God is with you. He's with you in all things. And he sent his spirit into our hearts. <laughs> we are his dwelling place. We are his dwelling place. I'm looking at a scripture over here on the side. Let's do it. Let's do this one. It says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, So while we are in this tent, we groan under the burdens because we do not wish to be unclothed, but clothed, <laughs> so that our mortal so that our mortality may be swallowed up by life. That's a big thing right there. So our mortality will be swallowed up by life. Jesus says, I am the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. All life comes from God. And if we're going to live a righteous life, we need to, to fall in love into his, we need to fall into his love. Not fall in love with God, but fall into his love. Sorry, I'm getting loud, forgive me. But this is the intensity of this. Falling into his love. God is not a man that he should lie. He's not like people in the sense that People, they know how to go in their house and shut the door and not answer their phone. Or answer what is, today we, you know, we have all the texting and social media. We know how to turn it on and turn it off or ignore what we don't want to answer, you know? Um, God doesn't do that. His ears are open and attentive to you all the time. Even when he's not answering, he's waiting for you to calm down and stand still and know he is God. You'll go looking for him. Those who diligently search for him, they find him and they're rewarded by him. You get filled with the knowledge of the will of God and his will for your life is not evil. It's peace. It's life and peace. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the one who wants to come and possess your soul. And I do mean it like that. He wants to take hold of your soul and cleanse it from its unrighteousness. So that you can live. So that you can really live right. God's the one who ordained life. He himself is, it has no beginning and no ending. And he calls us into being so that we can be what we are, this this good thing that he made, this gem, this pearl, this awesome thing that he made. He blew his breath into our lungs. He blew, this is how important you are to God. He blew his breath into your nostrils, into your heart. He, you, when, you, when the sperm and the egg came together, there was a spark of light. A spark. That spark is God. That spark came from Him. That spark He created. Here we are today. Learning how to lay down our soul in the hands of the Almighty and trust Him even though we don't see Him. What does it say? He said, Noah walked with God. Genesis 6 and, and 9. He walked with God. He didn't see physically God. No man has seen God. It's what Jesus said, but the one who comes from the Father. He comes. A body was made for him. 
the word became flesh. He, he was in the bosom of the Father. Jesus is not a created being. He's always been. Oh, man. God so loves us. God loves us so much. He wants, to fall, wants us to come and fall into this abyss of his love because it's endless. It's light for all of our days. Light for all of our days. Noah walked with God. Enoch walked with God and wasn't found. He, he was taken by God alive. Hmm? Bible has a, a, a section in here where it talks about those who will meet him in the air. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, said the dead in Christ will rise and those who are left will meet him in the air. If we're going to meet God, Christ in the air, then we are going to have, our, have the soul of ours crucified. We're going to lay out this mind, will, and emotions. The way I think isn't the way God thinks. The way I feel about somebody isn't the way God feels about somebody. The way that that uh, the way that my will is is not God's will. That's why it needs to be transformed. I gotta take it, put it right here under the blood that I've said I I've, I've, I've pledged my life to. I've given my life to Christ, and He is the perfection. He is the the very image of God. If I've given my life to this sovereign. Father, this this great God, almighty God, then there is nothing left in me that loves this world or loves her life. Oh, it doesn't mean that I hate myself. I love what God has created. I, I love what he's created and what he's done. And when I think about him, I get so in awe of who he is and what he's done. That I like me. I like myself. I, I just do. That's why I want to keep my eyes on him because when I when I lean on, on, in the other way, I'll get depressed and, and there's nothing there that's good for me. God has sent a spirit into our hearts. We're the children of God who walk by faith and not by sight. We acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways. And he leads us in a plain path. For his name's sake. For his name. His name is on you. Won't we fall into this perfect love so that we can truly walk? Walk out our life walk out our soul salvation that's what i really mean to say my soul <laughs> needs to be redeemed it needs to be washed and cleansed from the the understanding i had when i was in this world from all of my dependency on my own strength and my own wisdom i've traded i've left behind all the cares of this life for the life that matters one day, this is all going to be over with. This is all going to be over with. Sin will not be around you. Or we'll be buried in it because of our choice for Jesus. If we're going to walk blamelessly, we're going to walk in the knowledge of God. We're going to submit ourselves to God and let him lead us in a, in a right path. He knows the will. He knows what he has in mind for your life. And he's going to bring you to it. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. And, and in him, having heard and believed the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the pledge of our inheritance until until the redemption of those who are God's possession. You're God's possession. To the praise of 
his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. See, there's perfection right there. You love everybody. You especially love the saints. Huh? You go about doing good just like Jesus. You, Whatever God has called you into this life to do, you're doing it. And if you don't know what that is, I'm, I just say fall in love. Fall into the love of God. So he can show you. Let him know your desire for him. It's not I love you, I love It is I love you, but it's because you have fallen into the abyss of this love that changes everything. Who are we at? We're in Colossians, Ephesians. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. This is Paul talking. That the, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom. This is for all things. All things. <laughs> and revelation in your knowledge of him. When we know him, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. All of our cares get thrown at his feet, and he gives us what we need, and the wisdom for life. We can live righteously in the sight of God. It's trusting him with all of my heart, with all of my mind, and all of my strength. What does it mean to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your strength? It means trust Him. You get the Word in your face. How are you going to live a righteous life? It's not being a mannequin. It's not being religious. This is a personal relationship with somebody who loves you so much that He created you from the dust of the ground and blew His breath into your nostrils. This is the one who sent His Son to die for all sin. Everybody's. Even the ones who are committing atrocities right now. God knows what's fueled, what's behind the words that have been spoken into the minds and the in the hearts of men. He knows every thought and every intention, but he also knows the rebellious one. The one who came to steal, kill, and destroy, and to steal as many souls as he can. But those who have been called by God and have said yes and believe, I'll say it again, John 3, 16, God so loved the world, so you can't pin, you can't go that one, this one, this one, no, not that one, you know he's not saved, she's not saved, you can't do that. That's not up to us, even for yourself. The Lord has called you to himself, he's called the whole world, and whosoever would believe on him, believe on Jesus, the Son of the living God, would not perish but have everlasting life. The Lord wants to restore our souls and make us what we truly are in him, but it, it, all this pain and agony from our personal situations needs to be thrown down. Thrown down. And he will heal your heart from all the damage that's been done in this world, in this life so that you can truly walk righteously in his sight. Right living comes by faith toward, it's faith toward God in all of our ways. It's acknowledging him in all of our ways. He is with you. You've become a part of him. He knows when you're hurt. He knows when you're confused. He knows when you're, when you're scared. And we're plain before him. We don't take fig leaves and put them in front of ourselves. We don't try to hide with, with something. You know, we don't pick up a book or a napkin and try to cover our body parts to hide our nakedness. We want to be naked in the sight of the Lord. So he can deliver us from the agony of depending on our own flesh, our feelings, to get free from something that we can't get free from unless we come to the creator who created us, who knows how we work. 
He knows how we work. He knows how we perform. He knows us from the inside out. And he wants to pour his word into us. So listen, we trust him. That's how we're going to live right. Because we trust him with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. Let me end this. Whew, boy, boy. <laughs> Verse 18, I ask that the eyes of our, your heart be enlightened so that you may know the hope of his calling, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and in the surpassing greatness of his power to us who believe. These are, the, uh, these are in accordance in, with the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at, the right, at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion. See? <laughs> Look at that. And every name that is named, not only in the present age, but in that that is to come. And God put everything under his feet everything under the feet of Jesus Christ and made him the head over everything for the church that's us which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all that's us we are in Christ and we cannot be moved so dive deep into the abyss of God's love You'll live righteously because you trust him with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And watch him. Watch him fulfill the desires of your heart. Watch him lift you up out of the dust, e even though this stuff is still happening in your life. You're learning to live above it and bless. Bless and not curse. I love you all. Bye-bye.